Coach Davidson tomorrow night. Let's talk about uh, the matchup with them and uh, how we'll look to attack them. Yeah, we, uh, you know, just trying to be as well prepared for a, a very efficient Davidson squad. Um, they uh, they have guys on the court that can shoot, dribble, and pass at a very high level. They really shoot the ball at a high clip. So, you know, we got to be on our game for sure. So, you know, when you win the last one, it makes the next one a little more exciting. And so, you know, I know with the Ram Nation will be out in full force. We're, we're excited to uh, play tomorrow night. It's a, that time of the year, so we, we got to be ready to go. We have to have another great practice today and, and uh, uh, do a great job for 40 minutes against a well-coached Davidson squad. Um, with the way they're shooting, and they all turn over a lot. Um, Johnny mentioned yesterday that uh, you guys have to kind of get them out of their comfort zone. Uh, what's the key to doing anything? Well, our style of play, um, you know, I thought that's what helped us with, with Dayton the other day that, you know, they want to get down and run their ball screen continuity and we made it tougher and tougher for them. And, uh, you know, I thought we did that at Richmond uh, for sure. So we've gotten a lot better at that of, of our style of play, of, of, of getting teams out of the, the rhythm of their offense. We got to do the same thing with Davidson. You know, it's much easier to talk about it than do it, but you know, it's what we have to do. And we have guys capable of, 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 you know, messing up the other team's offense at times, and we got to do that at a high clip. I think when you have multiple shooters out there, uh, you got to have great awareness. Can't fall asleep. You can't get out of your stance just because that guy you're guarding is two, three passes away doesn't mean he's not, he's not ready to shoot the ball. So uh, we, we talk about it all the time, and you can't look around against teams with multiple shooters. You got to fly around, and we got to make sure we're flying around. Is, is, Dave, or is Davidson as deliberate on offense as Richmond might be? And if they are, does that present a challenge no. at all? No. Honestly, they're they're not deliberate. Um, now they they're very efficient. Uh, and what they do, you know they're doing it, but they, they play basketball. They're not robots out there. So if you take this away from them, they're going to do that. You take that away from them, they're going to do this, which is harder to guard. Um, you can't just say, well, here's play number one. Let's take away play number one because play, play number one has so many counters to it. So you, that's where the awareness comes in that uh, he may curl a screen one time. He may flare on a screen the next time. He may backdoor you. Uh, he may come off the screen just to reverse the ball. So uh, I think it's you, you got to bring to the game great awareness. Um, you got to really try to disrupt the flow of the ball. And then away from the ball, you can't fall asleep because then that's when they really catch you. That said, and with Tillman's 37-point performance, now Davidson's fully aware of what he can do if you keep feeding it inside. Yeah. Yet they have struggled with the big man. Do you change anything or just keep feeding? No, I mean, we're, we're going to play the way we play. You know, we're still going to push the ball. We, we want to play faster. That, um, we still want to be aggressive shooting the basketball. Um, but when you have a guy that's, that's being, being such a threat around the rim, we got to make sure we get him touches uh, throughout the game in different ways. Um, but, and then Justin also has to continue to do what he's doing. He's getting his teammates open. Uh, he's doing a great job rolling really hard to get, you know, to, to be a threat against the defense. But then also when he has one-on-one -on -one matchups around the rim, he's, he's been a, doing a great job finishing and drawing fouls. And keep Peyton Aldridge from scoring 20-plus? Uh, guard him different ways. Um, you know, we uh, – you can't fall asleep on him. He does such a good job away from the ball. Uh, he's a smart player. He's been around for a while. He does a great job of setting himself up one, two, three passes ahead. So that's where you got to have great awareness, especially on the backside. And then when he catches the ball in the post, really just make it tough because he can get up over you. And he can't fall asleep. As we, we say, you can't be a big man that gets sucked into the play because he could step out to 22 feet and drain threes. So, I mean, he's a tough matchup for anybody. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll be up to the task. Um, the way Tillman played, you know, I was going to have a big game last game. But uh, the coaches, a balancing gap, we go back and look and see, you know, only one other player, double figures, and only one other player. So, um, I know that I'm playing more than 10 shots, so the balancing guy, where you love it, something you did, but you wish it was more. Well, balance. you have some games where there's great balance, and you have some games where some guys are just getting it done. He, he was getting it done, and our guys were feeding him. So sometimes you got to feed the beast when the beast is eating. That's, that's what I said to them uh, one, one time out. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. That's part of the game. But, you know, I think one of our strengths all year long and why we're – scoring 78 points a game is we have multiple guys that can score it in different ways. And, uh, 
you know, I think that's important. But sometimes you do have games like that where one player is gets it going and, and we play through that player a little bit more. And, you know, once it was going into the post with Justin, it wasn't coming out because he was scoring that ball. Um, and in some games it's going to come out and guys are going to hit threes or we're going to get to the foul line. So, yeah, we, we definitely want multiple guys finding ways to score the ball. But sometimes you have games like that where, you know, you got to ride that guy too. Do you ever have to pull Justin aside and say, okay, Dayton did this. Davidson is probably going to be doing something different. Don't get frustrated if it's not coming as easy as it did in the last game. There are more than one way to be productive and efficient inside our offense. For, for oh, yeah, that. absolutely. And, and, and when every team's different, you know, when we do scouting, we, we talk about how people guard interior defense players and, and uh, how you're going to be defended. So we talked to Justin about that yesterday. We'll do it again today. And, you know, everybody's different. And, and sometimes some people show up with a whole new defensive scheme when you have a, a big game like Justin did. So um, we'll, we'll be ready for that. You know, we're, you know, there's certain things about our guys. There's certain things we're not going to stop doing. We're still going to be really aggressive. Guys are going to have, green, you know, the green light and, and, and play downhill. Uh, but if we could play through Justin and it's successful, that's that's a great bonus for us. Confidence, you know, that you can get from a win like Saturday night, can that carry over momentum, you know, for tomorrow night and through the rest of the season? Yeah, I think especially this time of the year, um, when you have when you have a good win, um, a lot of guys did some some great things, and uh, I think that builds great momentum uh, at this time of the year. And you know, we're still playing for for some, some stuff out there. We're playing, we're playing, uh, you know, there's a couple things out there that we can get seeding, how high we can get in, in the race here. Uh, I think that's that builds great momentum after a win like Saturday. Off that, um, you know, with you only being one game behind there's some standings, do you kind of look at this as an opportunity, a big opportunity to, uh, you know, kind of improve your chances of the top four? So yeah, absolutely, know. absolutely. And, you know, uh, Team, some teams are, are getting close to packing up their uniforms. Other teams are fighting for that that spot that they really want and, and, and know they have more season. I think our guys are in a good place with that for sure. And, that, and the best way you take momentum into the next game is, is you take it from the last game. And so hopefully we could take the momentum from Saturday's game and, and really build on it tomorrow against Davidson. Um, you mentioned on uh, Saturday, uh, Justin has some uh, great defensive possessions, and obviously he does a great rebounder, but how have you seen him progress as a defender um, this year? Yeah, I, I thought in the last few games he's done a better job of uh, protecting the rim, uh, making making people miss around the rim on us, uh, getting in the way sometimes, as we say. It's not always taking a charge or always blocking a shot, but just making that guy who's around the rim or driving down the rim miss. And I thought at the end of the, you know, a lot of people say, oh, this team can't press or we're not getting all, all the steals that we've had in the past in the backcourt. But I, I, the last few games, what we've really done a good job of is speeding them up and teams making tough, sh taking bad shots or tough shots or quick shots. But also going to the rim, Justin's done a good job of making the miss. We scrap out the rebound, the missed shot, and we're off to the races. Uh, that, that has really helped us as a late, and I think that starts with Justin's defense at the rim. Steve Kerr last night let uh, some of his players run the huddle. Have you ever thought about trying anything like that or doing anything along those lines? No, we're good for now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you know, a couple. I, I always let our guys speak up in the huddle, uh, without a doubt. A, a great point from their teammate, I think, is sometimes more important than a point from the coach, uh, without a doubt. Uh, you know, Johnny does a good job of talking to his teammates, and there's times in, in a timeout he'll say some some great things. But I, I I encourage our guys to speak up all the time because. Great points from your teammates, I think, are even more important. Being up by 46 helps. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> two best players in the league, too, helps, too. Um, who, who, who is uh, kind of speaking up the most of that kind of like Johnny's role? Or is he speaking up the other most? Yeah, Johnny, I think Johnny gives the, the, gives the most feedback to guys, w without a doubt, or talks to guys through. But, uh, you know, DJ, DJ has a very good basketball IQ, so I think he, he has good awareness where. Uh, he, he he helps certain guys or hey we'll be ready for this be ready for that I think they does Sean Mobley's starting to talk more and more which is is great for a freshman so uh, those three guys probably the most and the grind of the season like the, you know at this point is it <coughs> necessary to try out new strategies or anything you know oh yeah different approaches yeah absolutely like late game strategy for us um, without a doubt so I, I think you know you can't 
overhaul everything. Uh, but there's some things you scrap a little bit. And there's some some things you add, w- without a doubt. Um, you know, we we've, there's certain things we've worked on all year long um, that we might not u- have used as much that we may use a little bit more down the stretch.